Today I'd like to show you a phenomenon that I think is surprising. And we're going to start with this coil. I made this out of a piece of PVC pipe. It's hollow on the inside. And there are about a jillion turns of number 26 wire up here. I lost count. If I connect up power to this, you'll be able to see the current going through the coil because I have a 2 ohm shunt that is in series with the coil itself. And so if I connect up an AC source, and this is 130 hertz, amplified by a Pascal amount of Vermeer amplifier over here, what you see on the scope is a sawtooth pattern that is the triangle wave of the current going through this coil. This also represents the B field that's changing in the coil. For the next part, I made a ring of 14 gauge wire that is split in two places. Here I have a 2 kilo ohm resistor, and over here I have a 1 kilo ohm resistor. I also put two loops in on the side, it's where I can make some connections. What I'm going to do is take this ring and place it around the coil over here. So we're going to get an induced current in here due to the changing B field. I'm now going to take our ring and put it over the coil so that we're going to have this ring circling this changing B field. In order to hold it in place, I'm going to use a piece of styrofoam here just to hold it so that it doesn't slide. Now, so you have a reference as to where things are, the 2K resistor is right here. The 1K resistor is here. Here are the loops on the side where I can make some connections. I'm going to put the 2K resistor toward you. I made an amplifier over here that's 40 dB because the signal that comes off of this is very weak, and I needed to show that on the screen. So I'm going to hook up channel A to the ring, like this. And just to show you that the amplifier is not doing any tricks, I'm also going to hook up channel B to the same place. Turn on the B field. We have our B field. Channel A will be on this line. That would be this input. Channel B would be on that line. And that's this input. Turn on the amplifier. And here we have the signal from channel A the signal from channel B, and if I superimpose them by just moving channel B up, you can see that the waveforms are nearly identical, and so the amplifiers are good. But now I'm going to show you something that I think is going to surprise you. I'm going to disconnect channel B. From where it was. And reconnect it on this side of the coil. Connecting up my ground over here. And the red lead, which is the same thing that we had before, over here. Now keep in mind that what I have here 
are the red lead and the black lead from both channels going to the same point. Let's look at the scope trace a little closer. This is channel A. This is across the 2K resistor. This is channel B across the 1K resistor. If the same current is being induced in the ring, then channel A should represent twice the voltage of channel B. If you look at where we are on the screen, channel A is one, two units high, channel B is one unit high. I can position their baselines a little bit on top of each other so that you can see that, yeah, these guys are actually two to one. I found this fascinating, and I hope you did too. Not so much that we could read two different voltages across two different resistors, but the fact that we read them at the same place. If you think about Faraday's Law, you should be able to come up with a solution to this. Enjoy!